up and was raised in England, for those of you who can't tell. And um, I'm not Australian, okay? <laughs> Seriously. Okay, we can talk about this later. We speak English, so if you don't understand me, that's not my fault, okay? Um, and I was raised in a small church, you know, 50 people at the most. And in children's ministry, to me, that involved a table, four chairs, three kids, and an adult that would switch out every other week. And if we were lucky, we had a cup of juice, okay? We also had Bibles as well, but, you know, children's ministry to me was so basic, and when I came out to America for the very first time and took on a position in a church, I was overawed with the craziness of church. You know, how, how, how complex children's ministries are. You know, understanding what Pro Presenter was or Planning Center or all of those different things. And one of the things that in my first couple of months that I really struggled with was that I lost sight of the basics. I lost sight of the essentials that, that are so important. And when you lose sight of the essentials, you lose sight of what it's all about. And, and for me, one of the essentials of children's ministry and of being a children's pastor is the work and person of the Holy Spirit. And for me, the, well, Galatians says five, in Galatians 5.25, it says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That means also the NIV says, let us keep in step with the Holy Spirit. And one of my struggles with children's ministry in America, and oftentimes in England now, is that when I see, when I see children's pastors, I see them get caught up in all of the fluff. And I see us get caught up in all of the administration and the other things and we get stuck and we miss out on the spiritual side. I see children's pastors who are afraid of the Holy Spirit and the work and the person of the Holy Spirit in our ministries. Children's pastor last week told me, oh, well, John, I don't think the children in my ministry need the Holy Spirit. I'm like, well, the children in your ministry are completely different to the children in mine. And the other thing is, I think it's too easy for children's ministry to become the hiding place for the spiritually insecure. It's way too easy. You see, nobody, even our senior pastor, expects, expects us to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit or in the, in, to stick, keep in step. There's so little expectation, and yet it's so important because when I look into the world today, I see a great field that needs the work of children's pastors. And so I want to talk to us today a little bit about just five reasons about why we need to flow in God's power. And the first one is to have God's compassion. You know, when I came out into America to intern at a church in Illinois, I did not know what I was getting myself into. In fact, I thought I was going to just survey the whole church. I had never thought about being a children's pastor because in England, children's pastors, there's not very many of them. And so I thought, I'll just see whatever, get a field, you know, I'll have a look and I'll, I'll, I'll pick the one that is right. And when I got here, I was thrown into the children's ministry. They didn't have a children's pastor and it was like, John... Get in here, you're working. And on my very first night in America, this, this redneck big dude, okay, and I'm just going to say it right there, okay, he's redneck, okay, he was a big dude, and he was like, he saw me, and he realized I was getting involved in the children's ministry, and he was so excited. He ran off into his room, and he pulled out this card, and he said to me, this last week was Father's Day, and I was in children's ministry, and this child oh man, they did this great card for me. And on the outside, it says, Happy Father's Day. And there's, there's, there's grass and there's, there's, there's a sun. And on the outside, it says, Happy Father's Day. And on the inside, it says, Wherever you are. Oh man, in that moment, my heart tore into pieces. Oh man, I just, oh, God just ripped my heart open. You know, you, you hear the story of Nehemiah and how God breaks his heart. And man, God just began to break my heart. Oh, that summer, as I was inputting data for our children's check-in program, I was just looking at hundreds of families, hundreds of families that we were putting back in who just had numerous last names, whose kids didn't even have any same name as their parents. I just began to see the brokenness. And as I interacted with kids, God just gave me an overwhelming compassion. 
You see, here's my problem. Because I see around and I, I see in Illinois some children's pastors and other places, I see people who, who don't have God's compassion for kids. And I look at it and I think, if we don't have God's compassion for kids, how can we understand why we really do what we do? How can we fully operate in that? I want to tell you, I have two kids in my children's ministry. And I shouldn't say this, but I have two kids in my children's ministry. They come to different services, and yet they both act and think they're cats. Like feline cats. I'm going to tell you that you need compassion to deal with that. Okay? You need... You need some real compassion because that is not, that's not easy. I'm like, yeah, but you're not really a cat, are you? You know, I'm like, I'm this sarcastic, cynical Englishman, and I've got two kids that like hide underneath my stage and lick their face. Seriously, it's tough. You see, we need God's compassion to do God's work. And we need the Holy Spirit to be at work. The second point is to reflect God's character. There's a boy in my children's ministry, and I, I love this boy. He's great. He's got type 1 diabetes. But you know what? He is a fighter. He plays football and other things, and I love to go and encourage him. And one of the things that I did this past couple of weeks was I went to his house. And his house, he's a, from a lower-income family. His father is not his real father. His mother asked me the other week, she said, So, Pastor John, you know, I've been really meaning to ask you, um, man, you know, what do you think about people who smoke weed? Because she smokes weed, and she didn't want to know my opinion. You know, this family was kind of a, a little bit of a mess, but I was there at their house the other day, and uh, all of a sudden, in the middle of this nice, gorgeous meal, this son stands up, and he looks at his father, the guy who's not really his dad, and he says, I don't even care what you think, because you told me I'm not your son. Oh, and the awkwardness in the room. You could have heard a cockroach fart. Okay? Seriously. I'm like, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like just edge out towards the door, but I'm like nailed in. I'm in the middle of this. Okay? There was nothing I could do. And my heart just was like, help. Okay? Okay, now here's the deal. Here's where it gets even worse. He says that, and the mum pipes up, and she's, she's like... Well, son, we all know your dad's a liar, so you're just going to have to get over it. I was like, what the heck? That's not how you respond. And then, okay, and then the dad says, well, I'm not a liar. And then he says, well, well, anyway, son, we all know that if anybody would say something that nasty, it would be your mom, because she can say the most terrible things to people in the world. And they just go back and forth, and I'm sat there, and I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? And uh, man, the child gets up and he storms out. You know, I was able to take that child outside and just be like, look, you know, talking through the situation and what happened and, and, and show some of God's character and nature and love. You know, here's the problem. So many of our kids in our children's ministry, we see a perception in church. It's so easy in America for families to come to church and put the smile on look good, and put on a good impression, but at home, the character and nature of God is not displayed. And often that one short hour that you get with kids is the character and nature of God. But here's the deal. If we're not operating in the Holy Spirit, if we're not, if we're not in step with the Holy Spirit, then so often we can say that nasty thing and we can be that nasty person. The third point is, we are, we need to flow in God's power in order to minister to children's brokenness. Man, a year ago, I was sat across a table with a mother who doesn't come to church, rarely on and off, and a boy who was 10 years old. And as I began to talk to them, it unfolded that the young boy of 10 years old for two years had been addicted to pornography. For two whole years, he had gone unnoticed. His mother was buying him things, you know, laptops. He had an Xbox. He had all of these different ways to get connected. And I was sat there in that meeting, and I was, I was thinking of the brokenness of our world. You know, sex is everywhere. There's so many things in our world, in this American society, in this Western world, in the English society, and, and it's, it's so hard for kids you know, I see a lot of parents who are like, yeah, well, we're just protecting our kids from that. 
and they try and shield their kids from everything. But the truth is, you can't do it. You can't do it. This, this woman, she thought she was protecting her kids. You know, but we need to be preparing people. And the work of the Holy Spirit, man, I want to tell you that you can tell a child how to improve. You can speak and tell them, hey, you need to improve with this. You need to love people. You need to do all this stuff. But the truth is, unless the Holy Spirit is alive and working in that child's life, then there'll never be freedom. You know, and we see so much brokenness. Families are torn apart. In my church, that was why I stayed. That's why I came back from England. Because there's so many broken families. And we need the work of the Holy Spirit. When that children's pastor said to me, we, we don't need it, or, or kids don't need that, I'm like, you don't realize kids have got so much struggle. When I grew up, it wasn't like that. It's so hard to grow up and be in that society. You see, the Holy Spirit... We can deal with, with the, the surface issues. We can deal with the intermediate issues. But only the Holy Spirit can deal with the root. And I see so many youth pastors who have major problems in their youth ministry. But the thing is, part of the problem is that children's ministries aren't dealing with those problems. You see, we, we, we just put it off and we say, well, they don't manifest till they're in youth. But the truth is, if we dealt with the core right now, he says, train them up in the way that they should go. The truth is, we're training kids up not to walk by the Spirit. Not to stay in step with the Spirit, but, but instead to read your Bible. And, and we're, we're saying to, to love people. And, and we're giving them good instruction. But, but the true source of life is not there. Number four, to, to, to take kids deeper into God. The Holy Spirit should lead, lead us deeper into God. I want to tell you today that you are the lid to your ministry. We always hear that with leadership. Everybody says, well, your leadership is the lid to your ministry. But I believe the spiritual side of your life is also a lid to your ministry. You know, if we aren't spiritually in step with the Holy Spirit, then how can we expect our kids to be? We must take people into a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But how can we take people where we've never been? There's, um, there's a young girl called Vanessa, and she, uh, she lives with her mom, but she also sees her dad every now and then. And, and Vanessa was the most sweet and lovely girl. And then all of a sudden, it's like she just hit that age where she just hardened up. She's about maybe nine or ten years old. And, and it was a, a good few months before camp this year. And, and I just tried everything with Vanessa, you know. I really tried to help this girl, but I was getting nowhere. And, uh, we went, and we went to camp this year, and, and I took her for the first year to camp. And on the third night, she just came to me bawling her eyes out after she responded to the message and, and to, to have the Holy Spirit work in her life. And, uh, and man, she just gave me a huge hug for the first time in a long time. And when we got home, I was so happy that Vanessa had, had received something. But, but it went even further than that, and I love this. It says, I got a, I got a text um, that night. We got back, and the text says, Vanessa is on a roll. That's what my text says. I'm like, I love these families. Vanessa is on a roll. She's telling every single person she meets, Jesus loves you. And so I thought, wow, that's so cool. I text back. I said, wow, that's great. Awesome. And she texts back later. She says, we drove by a homeless guy named Cody. He had a sign that said that he needed food or money. Vanessa told him that Jesus loves you. And I love this next part. It says, and then Vanessa started to cry. She started to weep. And she says, that made me cry. And so we went off and we, we bought some food for Cody. And, and we gave him the food. And when we gave him the food, that made, that made Cody cry. And then we were able to pray for him. And that, that's exactly what the text says. And, and man, I was just, my heart was so full. Because, you know, I can try and try and try in my own strength. But man, when the Holy Spirit is at work in a child... It goes deeper and far beyond anything that I could ever imagine. The last point, and this really breaks my heart, is that we must be full of the Holy Spirit. In the, we, sorry. We, we must flow in the power of God's Spirit because we must reach the unsaved kids of America. The Holy Spirit should lead us deeper into God and farther out into the world to meet human need. 
I want to tell you, you don't realize. I mean, those of you who have traveled abroad, some of you may have traveled to England. If you go to England, man, you would see so much ungodliness. You go into the estates in England and the difficult, rough areas. Man, if you visit churches on a Sunday morning, it's just so sad. And when I see America, sometimes I worry that, that America is headed down that path. That that's our future if the church doesn't stand up and rise up. You know, when I came out to America, I was so surprised because in England, churches, all they do is, children's ministries, all they do is reach out. They have an outward focus, not an inward focus, because there's no kids in church. And I, I worry sometimes when I came here that, that our focus, because we have such big ministries, that our focus is just inside and not outside. And we've got a huge mission field. And we've got so much need and so much to do that our heart needs to break. And our heart needs to, to be transitioned into action. We have to share vision and, and move people towards the world and to human need. I just want to finish and say that, that, that I urge you to make room and space for the work and person of the Holy Spirit in your ministries. I urge you not to be content with a ministry that leaves no space for the Holy Spirit or a curriculum that leaves no space for the Holy Spirit. But I plead with you personally that you would be a person of faith and somebody who chooses to walk in the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit because I'll tell you this, it doesn't just affect your own life, but it'll spill out into so much more. Thank you. Wow.